Hey guys, it's Victor and Ricks from Stream of Thought, and we just want to take a moment to say thank you for listening. We've been looking at our Podbean account recently, and we have many much appreciated downloads and listeners from different parts of the world. Yes, you heard it correctly, the world. And we would love to get your feedback, so please send us an email if you have any thoughts, comments, ideas, suggestions, or leave a like, rating, review on Stitcher or iTunes. And let us know maybe if there's something that you've heard us talk about, but you want to hear us talk about more. Or just something, anything new at streamofthoughtpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Thank you. All it's right. a new day, a new, new stream of thought. Shut up. <laughs> All right, we're back. <laughs> Episode 76 of Stream of Thought. And today I'm talking a little slower because I'm trying to remember exactly we what d- we talked we about. We talked about so many things so quickly. It's It's all just a very random assortment of interesting, intriguing topics, like the fact that Victor didn't know what WWE was until... No, I knew what it was. I just knew... I, I didn't made know what the connection for. to a childhood memory no. that just lit up his personality no. yeah. in a way that is so rare for Stream of Thought. I you knew get to what see it was. Victor just in a joyous, bubbly mood. Talk a little bit about movies, um, golf. Talk about golf. Diet. <laughs> When did we talk about that? Briefly. A really? certain individual's diet. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And we talked about uh, my learning experience when I just had this... It, I'm not, I don't want to bring it up right now because then I'm just going to be in a bad mood. Acting job. Yeah. <laughs> We're but, on a good roll. Yeah. This has been a true stream of thought with many just hard left turns and abrupt stops, stop and starts. <laughs> Really? Yes. Really? You're gonna you're gonna set us up like that? Yeah. That's right. how it is. That's how it is. It works well. Cool. So, episode number seventy six, stream of thought. We hope you enjoy. All righty. Oh my god. So Becky, look at her butt. Last night I go to I go downtown to meet with the writer slash director of this film that I'm going to be doing this weekend dude it was so painful so I'm there right I forgot to bring the script first of all okay and by no means am I how do I, I just okay let me start over you sound very stressed is there high I get there. Right now? I get there, and I'm just like, I cannot believe we're spending this much time on this shit right here. So, I she's very indecisive and doesn't really know what she wants. That's what's really extremely frustrating. Because first, first of all, I see the script right. And Is this the first time that you you're able to look at the script? Yes. Okay. And it's not written the way it's the it's not formatted the way a, a, a script should be formatted for film. Oh. Okay. And this is for the student. Yeah, film? this is for a student okay. film. Yeah. Another student film I did, and it was everything Normal. was kosher. They followed the and everything was practices. cool, and everything yeah. was everything just flowed, flowed. and it was yeah. like we never met before we shot, and I we get there the day that we're shooting, and he's like, oh man, okay, this is funny, and if you said something just a little bit. Differently, it didn't matter, and then there was some improv, so it was very enjoyable to do. Yeah, so yeah. This time, so get, you have something to, yeah. to base it off of. So I get experience. the script, yes, right. And normally, if if someone wants you to do something differently, they tell you like, okay, try and you know do it like this, or try and do it like th- like they kind of give you an idea so that you can figure it out. Like angrier, happier. And this like- this person was like being extremely specific the way they wanted things done and telling me, like, different multiple things at the same time. And I'm just like, just let me, let me, give me some direction, that's cool, but if you're wanting to be puppet master, like, that's not, I'm not Can you give that. an example? So, for the lines, right? Yeah. It was like, um, you know, the, the line, I don't know, the line says, you know, say, who are you? What are you doing here? Maybe, I don't know. I can't remember. I don't have the script with okay. me. I was going to work on it today. I'm like, hell no. I'm not putting any outside effort into this right now because it could be completely different by the time we meet tomorrow. So it could be like, say, for example, like what I say, how are you? What are you doing here? Okay, can you say it like this? Okay, say it like that. Say it one way. Okay, okay now, you know what? Say it like what? Now say let's it like- try... 
Now let's try, instead of saying, how are you? What are you doing here? Say, what are you doing? How are you? Switch it around. So if there were like three different phrases, you remember factorial from, no, from high school? Not at all. So factorial in math is every possible um, like combination that you can do. So for example, if, you have a, if you're taking a photograph of six people, and you want to figure out every combination that you can take of, of those six people, you do six times five times four times three times two times one. That's factorial, mm -hmm. okay? It gives you every possible combination uh, that you can do with that number. That's what I was doing with these lines. And my first thought is, like, if you, like, you, need, to, you need to be confident in your script before, you, before we get started on this because this is a huge waste of my fucking time right now, right? You didn't say that. No, this is what I'm thinking, yeah. though, because... One page, right? There was one girl who couldn't be there. We do this for about one hour going over one page. After we were doing... How many pages the, are there? It's like three or four pages. I don't okay. know, dude. But, but an hour for a page is... And so, wow. so, the, um, so the lines I'm looking over, and then, and then they're like, okay, every, we'd go F over every possible combination, and then be like, okay, instead of saying... Who are you? What so are they want instead, you to test out saying, every single yeah, and, possible and then it's like, and then it's like, okay, oh now goodness. instead of, you know, instead of saying, you know, something like, what are you doing? How have you been? I, I, let's say, how is it going? Well, um, What's up? Or something how, like that. How have you been lately? <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? So like every possible tiny way that one phrase could have been altered i've said it in this you know yeah and then by the time we get to the end after about an hour she's like oh yeah you, how do you guys feel about it? like oh yeah way better way better way better which is good it got whittled down a little bit but just the amount of time over like the tiny little things and um and she's like yeah and you know what we you know, maybe we'll just do with, like, guidelines and we can just do some improv, improv you know, just kind of improv the lines. Maybe that'll help. I'm like, you mean we spent an hour on one fucking page on perfecting these lines and now you want to say that you want to just kind of just improv it? <laughs> you fucking kidding me right now? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I got the hell out of there as soon as I could. How, many, how long were you there for? I was there for two hours. And you spent half the time on one page. Yeah. Half the time was wow. spent... Half of the time <laughs> was spent on her giving me direction on how to play this scene that doesn't have any dialogue. It's just me. And, and that helped because she was like, remember, the, you're, the room is cold. You need to be shivering. I'm like, oh, okay, very awesome. And she'd be like, try this. Remember this. And you don't have to do it in this order, but just kind of whenever you feel it. So I, the first half was great because I was like... Oh, okay, cool. I totally get what you're saying now. And it helped me figure out the scene and the character a little bit more. The second half, wow. Brutal. Fucking brutal. That's where things ground to a halt. It was just, oh, I couldn't believe... And on top of that, I was tired. I was hungry. I was becoming very hangry. <laughs> so that did not... I can't believe you just said that. That did not oh, help. Oh, I hate you so and, much. Um, and it's the time that I get down to the lobby it's 8 19 right because i said i got to catch the train the 8 4 and i said to myself hell no i am not missing the train for this shit i am not spending another hour at ogilvy you know mm -hmm. for this mm -hmm. time to get to the train station two hours no yeah. like 23 minute walk i'm like nope we're gonna double time it so i ran like several blocks by the time i got to washington and wells i had like 15 minutes to spare, maybe 20 minutes, and I walked because it's only about a seven minute. Dude, I've, I got this shit down. Yeah. Once you, you know, to get to Ogilvy, wherever I am, like, I know exactly how long it takes to walk there. It's kind of like and so New I can, York I can system. calculate yeah. if I need to walk or if I need to run. I can, you know, I got it down to a science, and so I walked. <laughs> and I made the train, but I was just like, I am not missing the train because of this. So you have to go back when? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, and you have to be there all day? No, I have to be there by 4 p.m. By 4 p.m.? Yeah. And it'll be how many hours? It'll probably be like four or five hours, I'm guessing. 
Oh wow! Okay, so because it's because yeah. I'm because sh- tomorrow I'm shooting my scene, and then on Friday I'm shooting a scene that I have with this this other character, and then on Saturday I'm shooting a scene that I have with a different character. So I have to work all three days. So was she just totally oblivious to the fact that things were just a mess? I'm guessing that maybe this was her first film. You think? You know, and I hope that. You hope so. Right. And I'm not trying to say, like, I'm this elite actor person. It doesn't matter. It's standard it, practice to yes, do certain things. Yes, yes, and yes. If you don't exactly. follow standard practice, it's obvious you haven't really been in the industry yeah. long enough or had enough experience right. to be and, doing what you're and you doing. And you know what I was thinking of when I was sitting there? I was thinking two things. One of which was... Should have gone to California. <laughs> but it was just that, but I said to my, but then I was like, I said that jokingly to myself, because in reality, it is good to like work just to add something else onto the resume. And the second thing I thought of was like, as shitty as a time as I'm having right now, I am extremely grateful for this experience and appreciative of this experience because I, I'm learning from this right now. Make sure the people that you work with have their shit together. There's things that are outside of your control and outside of other people's control, whatever. But I know, I now know why having a script that is perfected is so important because no matter how great the story is, if it doesn't follow the proper format or if it's a shitty script, like it's not worth your time even thinking about. Yeah, dude. I mean, you seriously, you you nailed it, man. Like, just experiencing, I feel like most growth happens when you experience failure in one form or another, because you learn what not to do, and you learn very quickly, like, yeah, what is, what what are, what's really important in being able to make a production come together. But, dude, the other thing, that's the challenge about freelance work. Keep that in mind, too. As a freelancer, who knows what you're walking into. And I'm sure. It could be this and I'm sure or that, ten times worse. And I'm sure that someday if, you could walk if it in a Harvey Weinstein's office. I'm sure like, that someday, if it hasn't already happened, someone's gonna be like, Yeah, I was working with this fucking actor one day. He just didn't know how to do and I had to tell him I had to tell him exactly how to do his job. I hope that someday he gets it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> it was a it wasn't a negative experience, it was just a learning it was experience. A growing experience. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just like, oh my goodness. And <laughs> I was sitting there just, oh, I really wish I would have brought the script because I have my notes, dude, really. Is it Every a, an possible... atrocious script? Or... No, it's okay. not. It's just, I have all my notes in all the different ways. We Because once something was said, I'd cr- I crossed it out on the script and I wrote down what we agreed upon. Oh my goodness. 30 seconds later. Oh, wait, actually, no. Scratch that. Let's do this. So like, there's like three lines that I wrote down that are scratched off and I have arrows like pointing around. And the other thing, too, was that she kept repeating herself. So it's like, just tell me once or twice how you want it to be done. And I can remember, I, I am capable to remember that pattern or however you want it to be said. Mm-hmm. Instead of, um, like, telling me each time we do the line to do it like this. And it was just, I can see why now, I mean, I was there for two hours, an hour of which was rather unpleasant. I can see why now people in the industry are like, I'll never work with this person ever again. Oh, yeah. Because you spend 12 to 16 hours a day with these people every day for, you know, 12 to 16 months, yeah. if not longer, you know? So how do you plan to, to be a little more, like, how, how could this uh, potential be avoided for you in the future? How can you avoid, like, having to deal with somebody who's incompetent? Again, like, is there something that you're able to do to know ahead of time? You know, in this particular case, no, because I had auditioned and then I was notified that I got the part and I went there to do a read through. So there was there wasn't really any way for me to know like this was going to be crap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is why one of the questions that I have in mind for people that are in the industry that, you know, once this podcast grows to, you know, a thousand downloads a day or something like that. Oh, I'm thinking a million. You know, <laughs> one of the questions is, because you don't hear, you know, the junket, the, first of all, junket questions suck. Everyone hates them. Um, but the que- question like, 
how often do you sign on to do a film and realize like, oh shit, I really shouldn't have signed on to do this film. <laughs> You know, how, yeah. how quickly at yeah. the table read when you're halfway through production, you know, did you have a bad feeling when you met with someone and you realized you should have done it that you should have said no right well, then and, and there? think about then afterwards having to go out and promote your movie. I think back to oh, yeah, the most dude. famous example recently being Ben Affleck's uh, Batman uh, from it was the Batman versus Superman right. movie that came out. And as they were doing the, the junket and going around and having to do all these inter- is that what it's called? When they do a circuit, is junk it? I don't know. No, the I don't junket know what a, questions know what a are like. Question is, junket questions are like, uh, who was your favorite superhero growing up? What did you learn from this experience that you can like? Just stupid questions that everyone asks yes. you at every fucking press conference. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, but when uh, him and Henry Cavill were being interviewed, his the look on his face was just one of. There was a ton of memes made out of it. It was very, really. It was a very popular. Did he not? Do, did he not like Henry Cavill, or did he? No, not no, no, like... no. It was just. It was called Sad Flick. S- Sad Flick. Oh, uh, he was just tired like of doing press. No, he was just. He didn't. He knew that the movie was not going to be well received, and he was not eager in that interview to go okay. about promoting it. But it was just Got one it. of those examples of like, yeah, some people just know afterwards or during the production, like, oh shit, this is going to be just yeah. total crap. Yeah, I wonder Uh-oh. if he knew that about Gili when it came out. Gili, <laughs> yeah, everyone, you, you ever, uh, no, I've never heard of that movie. Gili was this. I don't, I don't think I saw the whole thing. I've seen parts of it, but Gili is this one movie that everybody makes has made fun of him for. And I think he's kind of like laughed about it himself, but it was made while he was dating. When him and Jennifer Lopez were dating, they had made this movie called Gili, and it was just a terrible, terrible movie. Okay. I feel like I've heard the name before, yeah. but I have no idea what it and, was about. And or people that just made fun of it all the time. Every now and again, you still hear people sometimes talk about it. Um, Dude, but it's just a really shitty movie. Did you? Did I mean along the same lines? Do you watch the Oscars at all, or have any interest in who? Yeah, we talked won? about this like last week. Yeah, but did we talk about the fish banging movie? The fish movie. The fish banging movie. Shape of Water. Oh yeah, dude. We didn't talk about that. I uh, I don't know if I'm going to see so. that because it just looks a little weird. For I me. mean, like, and it's weird too because that one be- best picture, and it, you think to yourself, I mean, for people like you and I, I mean, sure, it may be a very artsy movie, but I don't really want to watch a love story between a is that what reptile it is? and a cleaning lady. Yeah, and also like, uh, there's movies. Apologies that... to any fans of Shame of Water yeah. out there, but yeah, not really. And we again, don't give a fuck. I mean, no, not really. Uh, I mean, I might, like, I'm open to giving it a shot, but I have no incl- It's not something that I'm, I'm going to sit down and flop down and be like, I want to watch this. You know what's going to happen is, uh, like, in the, si- there's going to be in, you know, 50 years, civil rights for fucking wackos that are in love with, like, fish and pets and want to bang their pets and, like, be married <laughs> to their, be married to, like, animals and shit. Or, or there will be a laws allowing multiple wives, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what what kind of society are we heading towards? I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> see, it becomes complicated, doesn't it? Touche. Yeah. Uh, you going, just turned bright yeah, red, by the way. Going back real quick to uh, a mo- the movies. Like, um, my mom watched Phantom Thread with her friends at the Glen, and was she was telling me, like, that movie was so boring. I mean... My friends were loving it. I couldn't take it, Victor. I had to get up and I left. And I haven't really, I don't think I've ever really walked out on any movies. But my friends asked if I was going to the bathroom. I said, no, I'm leaving. Like, I have to go do something. I couldn't sit there and watch the rest of the movie. It was just so boring. Wow. And it reminds me of that Seinfeld episode where every, when uh, in the early 90s, when like the English patient came out, and there's an episode where like everyone's going to see the English patient. And I think Elaine was, like, the one person who said, like, no, the English patient sucks. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? It's like, am I going crazy right now? That movie is so boring. But um, going back to the fish movie, I mean, maybe I'll watch it. What is this, a a two-and-a-half-hour movie? I don't think it's that long. It was directed by Guillermo del Toro. See, the thing with me is 
that I learned, especially after Black Panther, I saw Black Panther because of all the hype. I didn't want to see it, but I went to go yeah, see dude. it because people were talking about it. I really have no inclination to go see a movie based on its hype. But you saw Black Panther. Yeah, but I'm because saying this I learned from that. <laughs> oh, from oh Black, okay. Like Shape of Water, if someone if I'm at someone's house There's and they want really to watch it, like hype about it. I'll do it. Well, I mean, hype, they won an Oscar, but like hype or no... like, if it doesn't look interesting, I'm not gonna watch it. I don't care if it was if it won Best Picture. It doesn't look interesting to me. I'm not gonna go out of my way to watch it. And I haven't really heard anybody say like rave about like oh you like you you would be surprised by this movie like Guardians of the Galaxy. Like I told you, if you watch that, you'd be surprised by it. Yeah, and you'd enjoy it, even though you had no inclination to oh, see it. Yeah. It was popular or you're whatever, right. but you gave it a shot and you're like oh okay, I see what is a value in this movie. Whereas I haven't heard anyone say that about Shape of Water. It's like. Yeah, you know, it's about a romantic, it's a romantic love story that pushes the boundaries. I want to know how they whatever. pitched this. Like, how do you pitch it? All right, there's love. Man. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that. We've done that. And then there's fish. We've done that. What about? Fish in love, love. with humans. Now that's an idea. <laughs> now that's a million dollars. You can dollar take to the bank. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I don't know. Yeah, that is, and the fact, too, that it, I mean, apparently was good enough and art, artsy enough, yeah, groundbreaking enough to. to Who knows? Win. Maybe I'll watch it someday and think it was. I think it's like one of the greatest films ever. But I'm not. Um, when you're more sophisticated, oh, I'm just like not dying to go see it. Man, are you gonna watch uh, Infinity Wars when it comes out? Avengers? No, of course not. That's so sad. No, I'm I not know. going to. I know you're not a. You're not a. It's so weird because you're like. You like certain pop culture things, but then you ignore other big pop culture things. It just doesn't, like... If they came out with a Walking Dead movie, would you watch that? Yeah. Okay. I would. I would watch that, too, actually. I would watch Walking Dead A reunion Dead where movie. they bring Curl... Curl! <laughs> I'm surprised that has been turned into a meme. Curl! I've se- I actually have seen some pretty good memes. That's really funny. <laughs> with, with actually a piece of coral with, with a hat yeah. on it. Coral. Coral. It's been pretty interesting. I got through the first half of the season premiere and I gave up. What? <laughs> I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to finish it for sure. But it was like, this is not capturing my attention. It gives you, because what sucked about it is that like, uh. it's, it gives you like, it gi- it's very interesting for like five minutes like with the war, it's like, oh, oh cool. Yes. And then it just comes to a screeching halt and gives you five minutes of Carl dying. It's like, well, this is stupid. Shoveling dirt. And then it goes back to like five or seven minutes of like the war. Yes. And it's actually. like, oh, oh, nice. This is very cool. There's a lot happening. It's quick. It's, and but then it goes back to Carl. It's like, oh, what the hell? They had how many cutscenes in the first half an hour? Like six cutscenes to them shoveling dirt. Yeah. Like six cutscenes. I'm like, after the fifth one, I'm like, this is getting ridiculous. I can't watch another cutscene of shoveling dirt. This is, this is, I mean, I appreciate whatever artistic value you find in that, but I was already on the fence coming back to watching Walking Dead. The last, the last episode that not happened. Not doing yourself any favors. The last episode that happened follows Gabriel, and it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Okay. So far, each episode has been just enough to keep my attention. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll push through and uh, really, I mean, I just need to find a time. Yeah, but, yeah, that's all right. Find a time to watch a break. I'm glad bad. that I'm glad that you're finding enjoyment in it, though. I mean, because I'm someone ready. is. I mean, I like. We have at least another season. One right? more season. I'm, I'm guessing ready. one more season. I am ready. Game, I'm ready for Game of Thrones. I saw this van. <laughs> I saw this van that uh, to totally. Beat I saw it. this van that was in front of me when I was when I was driving over. And it said, uh, fire and ice, heating and cooling. Oh, and man. I immediately what thought a brilliant of, marketing. I immediately yeah. thought of uh, Game of Thrones. But what bothered me about the words that it said on there, it said fire and ice, there was an apostrophe on both sides of the N. I don't know if that's grammatically correct or not, but it bothered me. On both sides of the You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, fire and ice? Yeah. Yeah. Jump almost like this truck that we saw that has one side of it on one on the rear window. I've never says, seen a truck this decked out it's a, in what promotional it's stuff. It's a certificate repair. Oh, no, 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 no. Or, it was, it was on the rear window. It said high school diploma, GED, $150, and then a telephone number. And then on the other side, 
on the side of the car, it said, like, credit repair and a telephone number. And then, like, a magnetic sticker on the door, there was uh, car repair, some other type of repair yep. and a telephone yep. number. Something kind of interesting. You, you know uh, the gun debate that's been going on about school, like, the, or the school shooting issue that was brought up by the high school down in Florida? Yes. Uh there was, what is today? It's the 14th. So I guess I, today or yesterday, there was the national walkout where everyone around the country was encouraged, in high school, was encouraged to walk out mm. and stand outside for 17 minutes for the lives that were lost and then go back in. Uh, so it was interesting how Glenbard West responded, our high school, old high school, responded to this. They said, we are not going to prevent students if they choose to leave and leave the building during school hours uh, or while class is in session, um, will receive a detention, but they won't be forced to serve it, and we won't try to prohibit students from leaving. But this is, uh, it is a violation of our code of behavior by walking out of class. And so, like, by the book, we have to give you detention, but we're not going to enforce it. You don't have to actually serve it out. So it's that weird, like, middle ground. of. Like, so they want to say they support the activism, but they are not allowed to say they support the activism. Yes, correct. Is I think that's how they feel, is my impression. And it's interesting because the only, the only reason... You want to know why? I bet if it's something stupid like, we support this activism and, and people leave the school and then someone gets hit by a car, they're going to be sued for allowing, like, something stupid like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean for sure because they're and you're, they're walking out of a they'll be liable controlled for environment. The, yeah, they'll be liable for the students if they say yes, you are allowed to leave the school. Yes, but this is one of those like special exempt exceptions right. where they can look look turn the other way yeah. or whatever. Um, so th- it is interesting because you you think suburban Chicago, wealthy high school, probably. Well, it is interesting because a lot the reason that I know about this is because my mom is on the League of Women Voters, Mm -hmm. and a lot of the other women on there are substitute teachers who teach there. And so they have all the inside information. They've been able to um, communicate this information to the League, which then I hear about Mm -hmm. as well. But, yeah, it it sounds like everyone was sort of on board to support the, the movement. It's just they needed to, probably for liability or whatever, administrative sake, they needed to do that thing. Um. Changing gears, kind of. Actually, it is. I was watching, um, and I'm only changing gears because I have, like, nothing to add to that. And it's just, like, same old, same old. But I saw this video that uh, these people followed, like, Donald Trump's diet for the day or, like, a week. Uh Dude, it starts off with, like, breakfast, egg McMuffin, and a Diet Coke. Then, like, some other shitty food and a Diet Coke. More shitty food for lunch and a Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Shitty f- snack, Diet Coke. Shitty snack, Diet Coke. Diet Coke, dinner, Diet... Like, what the <laughs> fuck? And I think they followed them around, like, their normal, like, jo- at their jobs. And, like, I didn't watch the whole video because I'm not spending 12 minutes of my time watching this shit, you know? I <laughs> it was a 12-minute video? No, it was, like, a, it was like it was a, a, long, a longer, longer video than video. I typically watch. Yeah. Like, yeah, for something And like I only that. need about two minutes to understand what it's about. <laughs> get the get the gist. Yeah, so I, like, I, I like, Lots fast... Of Diet Coke. I, like, move the cursor, so, like, fast-forward it almost, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think it's, like, tw- 12 Diet Cokes a day. What? 10, I don't know. Oh my goodness! Really? Uh, when they tracked I it, it was it was, it was around ten to twelve. Well, this I mean, is a video that I saw on Facebook. Oh you know what I'm saying? Goodness. How how but, is he still li- like? He doesn't exercise. No, he doesn't like exert any energy. Literally, all he'll eat. And then you have the reports of him falling asleep watching Fox News with a cheeseburger on his. Oh stomach. yeah, that was one of them. Yeah, cheeseburger was one of them. Che- yeah. yeah, he always has his midnight cheeseburger or like his his eight p.m. cheeseburger or yeah. whatever goes to sleep. But and then he only works about forty five minutes out of the day too. If not, if he's not, he's playing. Well, he does play golf, so maybe that's his exercise or whatever. But he's either playing golf or eating food. My favorite is or- the video of him. Driving onto the green with the golf cart. Yeah, yes, people were so <laughs> upset about that. It's like, yeah, I mean, I'm a Trump supporter, but that was just disrespectful. Yeah, that's it's like really you don't, funny. you don't. Golf do that. is where you draw the line. You draw the line. Respect for the course, especially yeah. if you own golf courses too. You're kind of expected to be a, a role model, 
in that regard. Oh, speaking of golf and changing gears again slightly. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, well, okay, so I... Tiger Woods is back. Speaking I don't care about that. <laughs> but I'm, this is a, rec- a movie recommendation for you, which oh, I think no. you, you will follow. Oh, no. Um, this is what I was thinking last time. I, I thought, you know what, when we were talking about Charlize Theron, I thought, you know what? Did you watch it, that, by the way? I did the watch house. the video. Yeah, the wing, the wing yeah. one. I loved it. Yeah, Thank it, you was for a, that. it was a great interview. And you know what? I was thinking, if fucking Ricks thinks that he's going to have a crush on my Charlize Theron, he's got <laughs> a fucking other thing coming. Because I know that that's probably that's probably bubbling <laughs> underneath the surface. I thought wow, about that. I thought, possessive I, thought, oh my. I thought about that a few times. But because uh, you mentioned golf, I caught the movie uh, The Legend of Bagger Vance on TV. Yeah. And Charlize Theron is in it. But what a fucking awesome movie. Will Smith, Matt Damon, Charlize Theron. You would really, really enjoy that movie. I feel like I and your might dad, have seen that movie. I think your before. dad would really like it too because he's into golf. He's probably seen it. Dude, it is great. It is really great. Yeah, I feel like I'm The Legend of Bagger Vance. Yeah. That's brief synopsis. Yeah. Cause I think Matt I Damon's character it. comes back from being just disappearing for like ten years and he was a extremely talented golfer. And he comes back, and he was like an uh, like alcoholic from or like uh, suffered post traumatic stress disorder from World War One. Charlie Theron's dad kills herself because it's the nineteen, I think the stock market or something. I don't know what happened. And they build a fundraiser to try and save the golf course. So they have like three golf legends to play an exhibition match. And he can Matt Damon like just can't get his fucking he can't get his swing together. He's lost it, but he has to compete in this exhibition, and. Um, Will Smith just shows up, like, out of nowhere and, like, helps him relax and understand life and golf a little more, and it's a great film, dude. I it think is I so have good. seen that, actually. You, it is so awesome. I'll uh, review it, yeah. When I listen to this podcast again, I'll remember. Yeah, it, so. and you remember uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, Breaking Bad. Breaking yeah, yeah, Bad. I got it. I, got it. My, I was thinking to myself, please. We were, were we, did, was it with Neil, or you were the one who said at one point, when you're either talking to Neil or someone else or you were mentioning something and you said you are doing yourself a disservice if you do this and you are doing yourself a disservice by not watching Breaking Bad. I know. I know. I know. You and don't. we have covered this so many times. What is taking you so long? I'm watching The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I can't watch more than one show at a time, Dude. man. You can. Dude, you can watch Breaking Bad and pick up Walking Dead next year. I'm also watching Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones isn't coming back this summer. I know. And Westworld (laughs) sucks. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Hey. All right. Yes. I'll I'll get around to it. And you know what? The day that I do, that could be... That could be part of it. Could be the 20 episode, years from now. And this you're could be, be part of our episode 100 special. That I'll have, in between episode 99 and 100, I'll have watched the entire I'm series. I'm telling you, dude. You start it, you're not and gonna I can, be able to stop. We can we can bro out on that. You start it, you're not gonna be able to stop. Yes, I I know. It it's one of those things where you just need to start it, and then I'm sure that I will be raving about it just as much as you'd like to. Um, so have you ever watched WWE before? Nope, I watched WWF growing up. What was the difference? It's the same thing, just different, like, I don't know, what the fuck. So, it it's World, I think it was like World Wrestling Federation or something, I don't know. It's the exact same thing. It's just okay. like a different name. With but it's it's diff- like the superheroes fighting each other in the ring kind of thing. Wait, or like the, the characters, characters. The wrestlers. Yeah, like yeah. The Rock or... Uh, the Undertaker. Or, so you had like, and uh, you so you had like Rock these two. Lesnar. Back in the day, it was like you had WCW, which I think I'm gonna go have to Google this. There was WCW, and there was there was like NWO, which I think were like the two different factions, like one team versus. I can't recall. This was so long ago, but WWE is the same thing as pretty much WWF. I think they just changed it for some legal well, reason. Well, because Vince McMahon 
owns WWE. I don't know who owns the other ones, but for some reason in my news stories, I just keep, I keep, I've gotten like three articles that pop up about WWE and it's very confusing. Why, like something must be going on right now in that world. So I figured that I'd ask because I do not follow it at all. But apparently, dude, these are like soap operas for men. Yeah. It's crazy. They have these ridiculous storylines and then they get into the stadium and they pack the house. I mean, they're, they're showing clips on these uh, articles and it's like, it's a, it's a stadium's yeah. worth of people that are there. And these, these people are getting up there. They're like doing their thing, but they're also yeah. actors. They so have here it is. great actors. Yeah. World Wrestling Federation, now WWE. Okay. So the, created by Vince McMahon and I'm trying to find, so you used to watch that. Back in the day. Yeah. Was it, that like when The like, Undertaker was around? Yeah, bro. So the, you got yourself uh, The Undertaker, who, who the yeah. Undertaker, Sting, uh, Macho Man, Randy Savage, Diamond Dallas Page. Oh, man. Uh, you really did know this. Ric Flair was still. Rick, I think Rick. Rick Flair. Rick Flair was nice. still in it. Hollywood Hogan was still in it. Hulk Hogan? Yeah. So like Ric Flair, Hollywood Hogan, like there's a few guys that were stars. So his, his from name like, was Hollywood Hogan. Stars from like the seven yeah. late seventies and eighties, and then the nineties was like near the end of their career. You Andre know the I'm Giant. Uh, Andre the Giant was more, I think, in the eighties. I can't remember because this is so long ago. Um, so you watched this as, a, as like a child growing up. Yeah, bro. Oh my god. No yeah, wonder dude. I watched this so shit much about you now. for sure. <laughs> you love watching uh, suffering. The Rock. Others. It the made rock. it made suffering entertaining. Woo! Suck it! Yeah, dude. Is that, that where I, you got the thing? Can you smell what the rock is? Yeah, cooking? yeah. Okay. That's so. Uh, I so always what wondered about is that. He his um the people's elbow. So his the move people's was, elbow. So his move was this: there, the guy would be lying back uh, with his back on the mat in the middle of the ring, and then do you smell? Well, the rock, he'd say that whenever. It was cooking. And then when it was time just to lay down the gauntlet, just really, he'd get that mean look. And he'd raise that one eyebrow. And then he'd lift his arm up. And then he would take, because he had like a, what do they call it? The things that go over your joints. Um, a brace or something. Yeah, he had like a rubber brace or like one of those things on his elbow. Yeah. And he'd give this mean look. And he'd slowly start to take it off. And people would be going nuts. And then he'd throw it. And then he would... Go from one, he would like start to go on one side of the ring, bounce against the um, the ropes, run, jump over the the guy, bounce on the other side of the ropes, and come and stand right next to the guy, and then just and just jump in the air and lay down and whack him with his elbow. Yeah, it was really great. I have to say, of all the reactions, th- I did not expect you to respond with the sort of childhood yeah. joy that Sting, just exploded. Sting was this guy that always had like this face paint on. He always had like this black trench coat and face paint. And oh, every yeah. time I he'd make an entrance, guy, yeah. he'd fucking come from the ceiling on a cable oh, my goodness. with a baseball bat. He always came in with a baseball bat, too. Wow. Yeah. Dude. I had this one game for a Nintendo 64. Um,. Oh, it was, I think it was called like WCW versus NWO Revenge, right? Because mm. WCW and NWO were like the two different teams, like the two different sides. And it would always be a big deal when one would go to the other, you know? And uh, that game was so badass. Did that you, so did you have wrestling. a favorite character who you cheered? I think my favorite was Sting. I think he was one of my favorite. Oh, Goldberg. Goldberg was another one. His his signature move would be like the spearhead. So you'd just be like standing there, and he would run up against the ropes and bounce, and then just tackle you. Oh damn! Yeah, that's gotta hurt. Oh, and there Regardless. was um, not Andre the Giant, but not the Undertaker. There was another really big guy that uh, that was in it as well. But I want to know why they went from WWF to WE WWE. Do you remember, though, Vince McMahon, they, he was the same dude that, remember the XFL? Yes. That was that around for, like, two seasons. He's trying to do an alternative, uh, yeah, he's trying to do another football league now. And he's trying to recruit players. Yeah, and it's like, wow, what a vicious, sp- I remember, I think we talked about this one time, where, like, 
You know in football, you flip a coin to see who gets the ball? Mm -hmm. And instead of flipping a coin, you put a football down on the ground. Equal distance from the football on opposite sides are two players lying on their backs. And then at the whistle or whatever, that you get up and you run head first. And whoever gets the ball first, they can pick if they want the ball or if they want to, like, kick. It's like, yeah, just have two grown men, athletes, oh, that, run that was the at rule each to other. Start the, oh, my god. Yeah, that was how you – oh, Triple H. Yeah. Triple H was one of them. He's a weird dude, man. Vince McMahon is – just str- a strange guy. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about him. Seems do you remember? Kind of uh, do you remember that game basketball with the trampolines? It basketball was like a ba- with the trampolines. It was like a it, jam. Was it called jam ball? Oh, it was. A, it was. Ba- imagine a basketball court, right? Yeah, it was a basketball court, and the whole thing, like there are many areas that have trampolines and some of them are angled mm-hmm. right so you are just bouncing from one to another and i think in between the trampolines is like padding i think it was called jam ball I've and never you're bouncing from these trampolines to another one to another so then you could like have the ball and like jump in the air like 10 feet above the basket come down come <laughs> crashing down did you do slam that did you ever do the that ball. What? Did you ever do that? No, I never did. It was on. It was a show. Oh, it was TV. a show. Oh no, it was I like a never seen that. It was no. like a sport. I think yeah. it was on TNT or something I don't like that. Have cable, so it's one no. of those weird sports. No, Jam we ball, I want to say, is what it was called. You know, what was a fun game back in high school. Wall ball. Oh, wall ball was good. Oh my goodness. Yeah, wall ball was fun. That was such an attack. What were the rules again? Because I was trying to remember a while. A it was days like ago. it was like you you throw the ball against the wall. Obviously, it's a ten- like it's we like have tennis. A, balls. It's like a little or tennis ball the, or, or like the a little rubber, rubber ball. The rubber balls. You throw it right, and when it, it hits the ball, and then it bounces against the ground. And after it bounces the ground, you can grab it. Yes. And I think you were only allowed. I don't know if you were allowed certain steps, but you throw the ball against the you throw the ball against the wall. It it comes back. It bounces off the ground, and you try and grab it. If, if it touches, touches you, but you, you but you can't, can't pick it up, catch it. You have to run to the wall, wall. and touch the wall before if, before someone else throws the ball at the wall. If you touch the wall before the ball does, you're safe. You just keep playing. But if the ball hits the wall before you, the person who th- you stand there with your back facing the wall, with your back to everyone else, and the person who th- threw the ball gets to throw it as hard as they want at you. Yep. <laughs> I remember that well. I don't know. I don't think that I was ever the. I don't. Th- I can't remember if I was ever a victim, of the I wall ball. We, like, we, I remember I threw a couple. I remember we played. We were Sam around, Rooney, and I we think. would play that before track practice when we were doing indoor. When we did indoor track before the weather got better. Yes. Yeah. That's when we would do it. I remember my favorite was Sam Rooney. <laughs> what did Sam. he do? No, oh, I, he, you I got to nail I got him Sam with the ball. Rooney, yeah, nice. That was my, crowning achievement and i remember like we played with a frisbee before track would start when we were outdoors oh yeah like coach xander and everyone else always get pissed like stop joking around like we're fucking whatever we're warming up seriously we're We're doing what we're supposed to be doing minutes exactly yeah that was a lot of fun Mm -hmm. well you got anything else um nope i do not I think that's it. <laughs> I think so too. I thought it was of a, a really scatter. I felt like this was a shotgun episode. Yeah, of like shotgun. a million bullets yeah. just hit us because I can't jumping remember half from the one thing we, to we another. Talked about. We took so many right turns. A lot of abrupt changes yeah. too. But after uh, after a, a lull, a, a lull. Yes, I th- I do have to say I think this is a better episode than seventy five. Yes, actually no, I don't. You I haven't listened to seventy five. I haven't listened to seventy five yet. So. But yep. That you fucking have to come up with what? a sign off. No, I have a sign off, but you don't like it, so it makes me feel um, inferior a when I say is new when stream I say of thought. Until next have time. Have a good day. Have no, a, no, have a great next time. No, stop. Until next time.